January 19th today, first day in at least three weeks that we've had any decent weather. The first time we get a chance to work outside. It's been blowing and raining and just generally nasty. It warmed up. We did have spitting snow and stuff like that for a while, but it's warmed up the last uh, week or so and just been raining. But we've had winds of up to 30 miles an hour with gusts up to 60. Uh, we just had one storm after another. Uh, you just come back to back. Sometimes we get a day break between the storms of the wind, but it just stayed raining. It's been raining anywhere from an inch to three inches a day for three weeks. So we haven't got much done outside, but I've got plenty to do out here now. I've still got some work to do on my pad out here that I'm making, and I want to haul more rock in here. And we haven't been able to do anything out in the woods for a while because uh, this ice and snow on the roads uh, makes it impossible or uh, too hazardous to get out there to, to haul rock. So hopefully I'm going to be able to do some of that for a couple days. we got a few days here now where we're supposed to have some halfway decent weather. It's supposed to uh, maybe get showers today and, and uh, snow showers and stuff even. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, what I'm going to do to start with here, I've got a new set of M McLaren tracks for the, X, uh, for the skid steer. Now this skid steer is a pretty good machine, but it doesn't do very good in the soft ground. It does great on the hard ground, but it doesn't do very good on the soft ground. And unfortunately around here we've got a lot of soft ground with what I do. So I got a set of tracks, of steel tracks to put on it, and I'm going to do that today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap my wheels around. I'm going to take my wheels off and, and uh, swap them around, put them inside out basically to try to get a little bit more clearance on the wheels for the tracks. So I got the, got the skid steer all started up and warmed up and brought it over here by the shop. Got the air compressor going. We'll get those tires changed, those wheels changed around. And then see if we can't get those tracks mounted up. Well, I got the front two wheels changed, swapped around. Because the valve stem is going to be on the inside on those now and hard to get to, I went ahead and checked the air on them and filled them up. I do have a tire that's leaking a little bit, so I got to keep track of it. That front one on this side. So anyway, I'll let that front end down. I have to jack in the back up and uh, do the back wheels. My uh, air gun froze up, I guess. There's a lot of moisture in this air and in the, few, in the airline and stuff and so it froze up and quit working. I dug out the old one and was able to get it working enough to make it work. I have, thaw out the, the new one and, and then uh, redo all the nuts and stuff with it. Well, anyway, I'm going to put the camera away. It's starting to rain or snow or something here. They put the camera away before it gets all wet. I guess I didn't hit record on that, but I got that track on there. It's pretty loose, so it looks like I'm going to have to do some adjustment on those. There's uh, uh, different holes in each one of those pads, so you can pull the linkage up tighter uh, in each one of those pads. But right now I've got it on there. Uh, it took the longest to figure out how to do it and to round up all the different tools. But what I did was I, uh, I ran the uh, machine up on the track until uh, tail end of it the tracks were just sticking out the back. I tied a rope onto the pad there and then I backed up to where I was sitting on the track on the rope. I run the rope over the tires and then tied it onto a pad up there in the middle and then ran forward and pulled that track up over the tires. And then I had to manhandle it because I had a bunch of slack in the back there. I tried to pull it out with a come along but that didn't work. 
uh, got the link in. Now, like I said, it's pretty loose on there. I'm going to have to take up all those links or a bunch of those links on there and try to tighten that track up. Anyway, it took longer to find all the tools and figure out how to do it than it did actually, would actually do it uh, to do it, but I don't know how long it took. But anyway, I got one track on. Well, I was wrong about him not giving any instruction or anything for those tracks or any support or anything for them. When I took that second track off of there, uh, this box fell out of there. And anyway, it's got all the instructions. It's all wet. It's got all the instructions in it. I'll have to dry that out, and once I get all done, I'll read it. But like I said, it's got all it's got the instructions in it. It's got a toolkit. It's actually got a, a ratchet uh, with some sockets. That I know that was three quarter. Maybe it's 18 millimeter, 19 millimeter. It says there. So I know a three quarter inch wrench worked on it. But anyway, uh, so this uh, these got these little claws here. I guess these probably fit in the tracks. And then you've got a. This would be. This will go in these, and you got a nut on each side of them here, and they're, they're square nuts, so they'll lock in. And then you can just take a, a wrench, that must be what, what these smaller wrenches are for here. Put this on there, put this on the tracks, and then take this wrench and tighten it up, and you can pull those tracks together. And there's actually some extra nuts and bolts there too, so yeah. Um, We'll have to see how those work. I could have used those to pull that track together to put that uh, couplings in there, but I can use them to pull each one of those pads together to tighten that track up. So anyway, yeah, it comes with a toolbox, so that's good. You want real maple syrup? Sure. Okay. Well, I got the tracks mounted up here on the skid steer yesterday, and then it got dark before I got done. I couldn't finish up. You can see this one's pretty loose. I'm going to have to tighten it up. Uh, these links right here, they're kind of a dog bone link, and they're bolted into each one of these pads uh, through holes here. And they have two holes here, so we can adjust that, pull it tight. Every one of these links is set to the outermost hole. So if we take uh, and change these, so we pull one of them to the inner hole, on each one of these for a while, that should tighten these up. It says three quarters of an inch for each one of these holes would change. Well, sometimes that happens pretty dramatically, but I got a lot of it's a lot of sag there. It's hanging over the back back here of the wheel. And, uh, anyway, there's quite a bit of quite a bit of slop in there. So let's see if we can't get that out. Now they say not to do more than one uh, link on each pad meaning I can move this bolt here to this hole, but I can't move this bolt here to this hole or the pads get too close together and then they bind up. So that's the project, part of the project for the day. The other part is I, I've got to take the track off the other side and turn it around. And when I put that one on, the other one was the first one. That was the track that was on top on there. I didn't see any sign of any kind of instructions or anything else in there. All I saw was the tracks. So I took the first one off and I put it on the machine, got it all set up. And then when I picked the second one up, then I found a box with the instructions and the uh, installation uh, hardware in with it. And well, then they, they said that these have got these bars in the front here. That's, bars on the track should go to the front and I've got it installed the other way around although I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference but anyway we'll turn it around so we get it but that track is loose too so I guess first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get this track tightened up so as I'm moving this machine around uh, it doesn't cause any damage pulling those wheels out swapping those wheels around 180 degrees like I did uh, putting the inside out and the outside in that give me plenty of clearance on there. You can see that now that I've got plenty of clearance around everything for the tracks. Well, I'll go get the tool that they've got for pulling those tracks together and start trying to adjust that track and get it tightened up. Well, this is the track tool they've got for pulling the tracks together. You see it's got a claw bracket on each end here and the bolt goes through here 
is threaded left on one end and right on the other so when you turn it one direction it either tightens or loosens both of those. They've got square nuts that are captured inside this box here um, so they don't need to be held and then uh, you've got a drive end on this end that I don't know what size that is everything's in millimeters uh, but this end down this bolt right here is the one I used and it takes an inch and a sixteenth wrench to turn that so that goes on clamps onto these uh, tracks right there and pulls them together so I'll uh, pull two of those tracks together those pads together uh, take these bolts out of each side. These bolts I guess are 19 millimeters or the nuts are 19 millimeters but a three quarter inch wrench works fine on them. I've got they send a half inch drive ratchet and a 19 millimeter socket plus the socket size whatever it is that fits on that end of that adjuster too. So the toolkit comes complete with everything you need to put it all together. Now they say in the book to drive on there and then fold those tracks up over the top by hand. When I was young that would have worked out just fine, but with an old fart with a broken back, I didn't really want to do that. Those things aren't that heavy, but they're heavy enough that it's kind of hard on us old farts. So I tied a, a rope on uh, one of the pads there on the rear and run it up over the tires and tied it onto another pad that was as close as I could get to the tire and just r walked it right up on there until I got that on the, all the way over that tire and then I tied the rope on the other end and, and uh, backed up on it until the uh, loose links were on this side. Now on the other side I just went ahead and pulled it all the way over the front there and, and uh, put it together with it down on the bottom but now that I've got the tools and see how you're supposed to do it right this is the way you're supposed to do it. So. Well it took a couple of hours but we got the track on this uh, right side tightened up. And the book suggests that it should be tightened to anywhere between uh, one inch and three inches of sag on that where it droops down between the tires. If it's too tight then it's going to wear the tracks out and tear up the tires in the machine. If it's too loose it's going to tear up the tires in the tracks. We had to pull the bolts on ten of those pads and move them to the second hole to get it tightened up enough to to get where it's supposed to be. And what I did is I laid a 2x4 across that the tires and then I measured down to the bars in the middle until we finally got it up to 2 inches or down to 2 inches. And it took two people to do it. I first started trying to do it by myself and I got a couple of them by myself. It's just too hard to reach in there and manipulate the bolt in the hole because you got to go from up underneath and then you have to be able to move the tracks, the pads up and down to get them line up to get the hole line up right and it's just about impossible to do with just one person. If you had three arms and one of them was uh, six feet long and articulated in three spots you might be able to do it but it went pretty good with two of us doing it. The left side over here is the side that I first side that I did yesterday before I found the instructions on it and I got those tracks on there backwards according to the instruction. The main crossbar is supposed to go to the front. I just decided that rather than fight with that track on the machine, I'll go ahead and take it off. I've got to take it off and turn it around anyway. And I'll just go ahead and take it off and adjust those tracks while it's off the machine. It'll be a heck of a lot easier to do. That way I can just do it by myself. It shouldn't take very long to do that. I know I've got to do 10 of them, so if I do 8 of them to start with and leave 2 of them uh, to do, I can get it all put together and that way the track will be loose enough that it will be easier to put together uh, to put it back on the, the tires and then we'll have slack on it to do that and then we can go ahead and tighten it up. Anyhow, that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and start that machine up and back it off of that track and then we can get it turned around and get the pads adjusted on it and shortened up and hopefully we'll be able to get that thing going. It's getting kind of dark now. It's getting late, so, uh, well, it's not late, but it's dark, so I won't be able to work on it much longer. Now we got a few nice days here now. Um, yesterday was pretty nice. day before it sprinkled a little bit. Last night it froze pretty hard. The grounds froze up. It's a pretty nice day, so I get to work on this again. I got that track on the right side all tightened up and set up and everything. And then this side I had it on backwards. I had it, these bars here, according to the book, are supposed to go towards the front of the machine. And I had it the other way around. 
So I took that track off completely. Of course it was sagging just like the other one was. It was pretty loose on there. So anyway, I took that track off completely and turned the machine around, put it on the other way. But before I did that, I went ahead and tightened up that track. I took eight of those links and pulled them together like we did on the other side and then uh, put the track together and of course then there was a ninth one that got pulled together when we put the track together. Uh, we run that one into the short hole too. Well I took a stick on there and measured it. You set a 2 by 4 on there like that and it's across the, the links um, and then measure it down and I've got four, four and a quarter inches there, so that's still too much slack in it. The other side we got it down to just a little over two inches, which is ideal. The company says it should be between one and three inches, and two inches is ideal. So, so I'll go ahead and tighten that thing up, take uh, one more link up. Now it may have been that I could have taken one of these pads out of there, lent one of these links out of there completely, I don't know. I didn't measure it, but with them all in there like that, uh, I think you got these spaces are closer together, which should give it a little more flotation. So this is the tool that they send to uh, pull those tracks together. It's got these two claws on it here. Um, there's a nice uh, box welded in on the claws and they've got a square nut that drops into those holes that's captured in those holes and then this screw is threaded opposite directions opposite opposite threads on each side so it acts uh, as a take up so and then it's got a nut welded on the middle and it's got a hex on this end that you can either drive it from one end to the other so by taking it like this that opens that up and you can just take, put it underneath the track and put those fingers up through. Okay, so now I got it two four apart. I'll bring it together. And we'll be able to take those fingers up through that track like that. Clamps together like that. That, that pulls those two uh, pads together. And it takes an inch and a sixteenth open end wrench and it's probably got an metric equivalent because they've got all metric stuff on the wrenches they provide here or you can put a socket on this end here uh, on that hex end of that and tighten it up like that but I don't have enough room in there for that to do it it's, it's easier to do it with this big wrench you know, once you get the slack out of that and McLaren provides uh, a ratchet here with uh, sockets for this so they have the right size socket I don't know what it is 11 millimeter or 13 millimeter or, uh, it looks like it might be a 10 or 13 millimeter anyway it doesn't make any difference because I'm not using it but they provide the socket for uh, 19 millimeter which is what this for these bolts here nuts actually the bolts are uh, carriage bolts they, they uh, have a square on the shank of them and they're round so that they don't tear up the tires so, anyway Take the nuts off of there and see if we can't get those bolts out of there. Just shake that a little bit. It's still loose. And get the bolts out. Okay, now what I do is go ahead and um, tighten this thing up some more. That track comes together there, like that, and those bolts still don't quite meet up. So I found that if I take a 
pry bar in here before they get too tight and pop this front track, the front pad, up like that so that it slides over the rear pad and then go ahead and tighten this nut up some more because otherwise those pads just run into each other and then you can't get it to where you can get this lined up here So that one the front pad slides over the rear pad and now I should be able to line these holes up on here. Yeah, that one's lined up perfect. I might need a little bit more on the rear one than I do on the front one. That's uh, what happens sometimes. So uh, I'll see. Now, these bolts have a square shoulder on them up here near the head, a carriage bolt, and they fit into a square pocket on these tracks. Well, you got to kind of line that up so they fit in there. Sometimes that can be a challenge. Oh, that one popped out of its little socket. Okay, that one's in. We'll see about getting this one. Alright, that one went in. Boy, that was the easiest one I've done yet. So. Now we just tighten these up, German tight, good and tight. Actually, the, the manual says 100 pounds, so or thereabouts. It says if you use a torque wrench to torque into 100 pounds. Well, that's it. Now loosen up that. Loosen up that tool there. And pop it off. There we go. I'll measure that and see how that worked. gives me three inches which is within the tolerance two inches that I is ideal and of course these uh, tracks are still pretty tight uh, from being new and they're going to loosen up as I use them so if I leave it at three inches so anyway since that thing is at three inches and that's within the tolerance I could leave it there but because the tracks are still brand new and they're going to loosen up very quickly as we use it, I'm going to go ahead and pull one more tight, uh, tighten one more link up, and that'll get me within my tolerance. That'll, uh, they, I think they said you get three quarters of an inch for each one of those that you pull. So if that's at three, that'll give me two and a quarter thereabouts. And so I may have to tighten it up again sometime later as those tracks wear in, but for now I'm just going to do it there at the median. And so I'll move the machine back a little bit so I get two more uh, pads set up to have the, the uh, space between them. And then I'll go ahead and go through exactly the same thing that we just did for that. So anyhow, that's looking pretty good. Um, uh, we'll see how they work. All right, I got the next track tightened up on that, adjusted up on that. It looks pretty tight. 
compared to what it was, but it's right exactly at two inches, just under two inches, like one and seven eighths inches, something like that, which is good. Uh, once we start moving it, it's going to loosen up just because it is just tightened the top of it, and then so once you get to moving it, it's going to loosen up just on its own, and then of course it's going to loosen up as these tracks wear in. So that took me less than five minutes, about five minutes to do that uh, track there. Actually it took longer than that because I got called in to have breakfast and had to do some other paperwork and stuff uh, between the time I got that last one done and I got this one done. Well once I came out here and started on that, it took me about five minutes to do that one, maybe less, I don't know, it went pretty fast. So I was starting to get the hang of it. Like I said, what I do is I put that clamp on there, um, pull these together to where they're not tight, but uh, to where they're held together, and then take the bolts out of there, and that's when you gotta, don't want it tight because you want to be able to get the bolts out of there. Uh, take two bolts out, opposing bolts, and then uh, tighten that clamp up. And I got to take some bars to put in there to pull this one uh, pad up so it slides over the other one and pull it in until the holes line up in these uh, donuts here and these links with the holes, the, the inner holes that the bolts are going to go into. Now you don't want to do uh, two of them on the same link because then it gets too tight and it'll bind these, I don't think you could do two of them on the same link, but it'll bind these pads up. But you can do two of them on the same pad if you do them on opposite link. That works out good. Okay, it, it's easier to do that if you do it where you've got space. So like for instance, this is the one I just did before, and if I did that one and then did this one, then it would have been harder to get that clamp out of there. But if I do, I moved uh, one pad, and then that way these pads here were farther apart. They're not close together, so you don't have to fight to get that link out of there. Especially, that gets harder. It's easy to do when it's lots of slack in there, but as you start getting that thing tightened up, then it gets to be harder to do. So, anyway, those should be adjusted for now. So, now I've got some stuff to do. I, I've got to go get my excavator started up and uh, move a couple things around and then I'm going to take this up and start moving a little bit of dirt and see how it works. Hey Zen, hey Zen, yeah, good boy, okay, well, well the tracks are all installed on the Bobcat and skid steer, everything's all set up on it now, so I guess it's time to put it to work and see how it works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that thing back up and put the uh, forks away and put the bucket on it and start doing a little work around here with it. Now, there's two reasons I got uh, tracks for that. And the one reason is because we get a permit from the Forest Service to get rock out of the shot rock out of the pits here and out of the forest and I get a lot of that and out there in that that shot rock is pretty sharp and that tears those tires up and then of course you spin on it and stuff you can't put all of the power of the machine into the bucket and the equipment on there it, uh, it spins out on the loose gravel and stuff and that stuff just tears those tires up so I thought if I got tracks on there that would help protect those tires and it may ancillary to that it may um, transfer more of the power to, to make it more efficient in working on that um, and the other thing is in, around here, the work that I do around here with it on the property, we're, we're on soft ground. I've done a lot of, of hauling muck, mud around where we've dug out uh, hillsides here and hauled it over and dumped it in low spots there. And as wet as it is here and stuff, that stuff gets pretty nasty and that bobcat is kind of helpless there on it when it starts spinning the tires. So hopefully that'll give it a little more flotation and a little more traction working in this mud and stuff. Well, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, move some, some mud around, move some dirt around. So I'll go ahead and take that uh, back up and take the forks off and then put the bucket on there and get to work with it. I've had a lot of experience working with track machines. I started out when I was about 15, 14 years old, 15 years old, running bulldozers, Cat D6 and John Deere and 
uh, their bulldozers and stuff uh, logging and I've got a lot of experience with them plowing snow and, and on the ice and stuff. I plowed a lot of snow with them, plowed in the ski resorts with a D6. And then here, of course, I had the track machines here, the, the excavator and a couple others. And track machines just don't work very well on the ice, uh, especially on the hillsides. You can get them going back and forth on the flat, but you, they act just like skates when you get on the hillside. And, and uh, so when I bought this machine, I bought it on wheels so that I could put tire chains on it to plow snow with. That was one of the things. And that worked works good for that, but it, it lacks in its ability on working in the mud and stuff with the tires on it. A track machine would be better for that. So that's why they've got the tracks. And I don't intend on leaving the tracks on it if it snows and if we start having to plow snow, because as I said, track machines don't work. I'll see how these work. These got some bite to them and stuff, but once you start getting ice on it, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, uh, they, they just slide and uh, they're, they're, they get to be helpless or dangerous. So I'm going to get to try on this machine and start getting it to work. When I first put those tracks on there, moved it back and forth there a little bit, uh, getting them on and whatnot, uh, they made a lot of noise and they bounced pretty good. Now that I've got those tightened up and set on there, but running that back and forth, they don't make near the noise, they don't clatter near like they did. But that thing is rougher than a cob on this hard ground. It jounces you pretty good, so it's going to be a kidney buster on hard ground. Uh, so this is our work spot or trial spot for the Bobcat with the tracks on it here. It was a nasty spot here. This is across the creek from where our working area is, where the cabin's at and the shop and all of that stuff. There's a little creek there. This is on the other side of that. This was kind of a nasty spot. There was a lot of trees in here, little trees in here. Are not too pretty good sized trees. Some of them I milled a lot of that stuff up for the the shop and some of the other things around the place there that we've built. But it was a, a nasty spot. There were big deep potholes in here and humps, well mostly holes, and it was pretty steep coming down here. Well, we hauled a lot of material in here, all the stuff that we've dug out from around the house, around the pads and stuff like that, we brought over here and we filled all this in and brought it up and trying to make a usable spot out of it. And of course, uh, my wife has got it all planted before I got all done with it and stuff. She's got her gardens in here and stuff already. But this is almost all fill in here, and this is the last bunch of it that I brought in right here. This is the stuff that I dug out of that bank when I put the new water tank in there, when I dug that hillside out for that. And I brought it in here and spread it out. And that'll bring this up almost to level, almost to a nice level grade. And it'd take a while for this to set up. Uh, it, it was all just mud. We've had almost 200 inches of rain in the last eight months or so and, and all this stuff is just stirred up and wet. And I usually work on this in the winter time when it's froze up and I could get around and then have to push this out and then wait for it to freeze up with the, to bring the bobcat up here to push some more out. So that's one of the reasons we got the tracks. So the first little job we're going to do here is right over here. My wife has built up some raised beds there and I've taken those out and disassembled those, but we've got the dirt that she's got mixed up there. She's, she's built up some soil for garden soil with uh, chicken manure and seaweed and done a lot of work on that kind of stuff, building up the, uh, some good garden soil. So I've got to move it out of the way so that I can bring in more of this dirt to fill. See over here there's a big hot pothole there, but that's kind of what we've done is fill this all in up like that and bring it up to a nice grade. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and see how that thing works on the tracks and try to uh, pick that topsoil up that she's got made up and, and put it in a pile where we can save it and then use it, uh, make some garden beds when we get this all stretched out, straightened out and uh, set up and we'll make some garden beds and have some soil to put in it.
All right, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. I never could have done that with it uh, just on wheels. It did spin out here, and I couldn't uh, get this one load off the end down here. It got down over the hill a little bit steep on that soft, uh, wet clay, and it spun out. I had to dump the load and push it backwards to get it out of there. But I've had that thing buried out here before more than once where I had to go get the excavator and tow it out, bring it out like that. Doing what I did here today would have just buried that machine. So I've got a good pile of uh, garden soil there dug out. But we'll go get some uh, more mud, some more stuff dug out and bring in here and, and uh, fill in a little bit more. Now there'll be a lot more brought in and eventually this stuff will be leveled out a little bit more but uh, right now we got to let the water kind of settle out of it and let it settle down. That thing doesn't exactly float on top of the mud over here where I was bringing the dirt piles up to pile them up. Uh, I was sinking right into that clay there, that fresh stuff that I put in there but man it did really nice. Uh, I never would have been able to do what I did here with just that thing on wheels the way it is. I have to dig through my a uh, pile of dirt there, I see some spuds and some carrots that got left in there, so <laughs> it will salvage some of those. So I'm going to move now and go down to the other end of the property where we're digging out for the warehouse down there, and we've got some clay and stuff to, uh, a little pile of clay and stuff there to, to uh, dig out to get out of the way, and I want to bring it up here and dump it, So we'll move down there. I don't know if those are the same deer that were over there by the chicken coop or not. Could be, they wander all over around here. <laughs> Haji, Haji. Good boy, good boy Haji. Getting a few snowflakes floating down out of the air here. So it got cold last night and froze up, but it didn't freeze hard enough to, to uh, firm any of this ground up enough to really work on. Well, this is what I'm going to work on here now. This is a pad we've been working on to build a warehouse on. I've dug out the bank over there. I've dug all this out. And most of the dirt I hauled over, uh, just uh, slung over the side over here and filled in some low spots off the edge of the property between the property and the highway. But this is what we've got here. I've dug this last part out. And I didn't have anything to do with this last little pile of uh, mud here. I, I've got some of it put up in low spots around in the muskeg around here. But that little last little pile there, I just didn't have any place to put it. So I want to haul it back around there where we just dug out. But this is all, that's all hard, relatively hard there. That's hard pan, uh, clay. But there's some soft spots in it but it's slimier than heck and so I was had built the ramp down there to take the bobcat down that ramp to go dig that out and haul that stuff off but I wasn't real sure I could do it with the tires uh, with the wheels on there so that's the it and that pile is uh, is just soup there so I'll go get the bobcat and see if we can't get that stuff out of there and get it moved out of the way So far I'm favorably impressed with those uh, tracks. They're working pretty good. I could have never got down in there into that hole like that and got a load like that. That machine will stall out now before it spins the tracks. 
it'll uh, kill the engine now before it stalls the tracks. Where before it would have spun out, I would have had a heck of a time getting around it. I probably wouldn't have been able to get down in there or get out of there like that. Now that I see what it looks like after getting down there, I probably wouldn't have been able to get out of there with on wheels. So far, those things are, gonna, are, are looking pretty impressive. The two things on them that are uh, detractions, negatives, are the fact that it rides rougher and now the track width is wider than the bucket width. So I'd need a wider bucket on there. The tracks stick out wider than the bucket. But Man, that thing works a lot better than it did with just wheels on there on this mud. Well, a little disappointment with the tracks today. We got some really nice weather for the last couple of days. It, it froze pretty good last night and the ground's hard. But the main thing is all the roads out, uh, logging roads and stuff are all open. All the ice and snow is melted off of them and we can get out there. Oh, it's supposed to start snowing tomorrow afternoon, uh, maybe an inch if it snows then. That's going to kind of put a crimp in getting out the road, so decided to go out and get a few loads of rock today. Problem was that we couldn't get the bobcat loaded up on the dump trailer here with the uh, tracks on it. It's uh, just too wide. It just hits the side of the rails there of the dump trailer. It won't, won't go up in there. So we had to take the tracks off, and with the tires widened out, with the tires turned around with a wider track on it, I got maybe a couple inches to, a room to spare on there. but. Uh, it fits in the trailer okay. But that's kind of one of the reasons we got the tracks. Of course, the one reason is so we can get around on the mud and stuff better. But one of the other reasons is so when I go out into the pit to, to get rock, it doesn't chew those tires up so so bad. I was hoping the tracks would armor those tires up and, and uh, protect those from getting cut up on the rock. But it, and it would, but it won't fit on this trailer. So we have to get a wider trailer to haul it on with the tracks or run it with just the tires. Fortunately, it just took a couple minutes to get the tracks off of there, and we'll get them back on again when we need them. But anyway, that was kind of disappointing. But we're off on a trip to go get some rock.